What's up everyone? We are set for the biggest week of the year. We have gigantic stock earnings this week from companies like Amazon, Apple, Meta, Shopify, Google, Ford, Microsoft, and many more. On top of that, we have Jerome Powell. Uh, one, we have a FOMC interest rate decision, and then of course a Fed press conference after that. So Powell speaking, and we will likely have another interest rate hike. And then on top of that, we have the Q2 GDP update. This week is the biggest week of the year. So we have some big things to talk about today. Stick around to the end of today's video. But Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, definitely. So that spy on Friday, Mike, was actually going up a little bit in the morning. We ran right up to a key level at $400 even. I hope that $400 is not going to be a big resistance with all these big events coming up. But like you said, we're going to have that FOMC decision coming up later in the week and the SPY started really falling off Friday. So I'm a little bit worried heading into a lot of these events. I hope the market can do well coming out of these. But looking at the overall, um, I guess, events going on here. So the feds are going to be meeting on Wednesday, Mike. They're going to make that interest rate decision at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then Powell will be speaking at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time at the press conference right after that. It looks like they're saying right now they're forecasting the interest rates to rise up to 2.5%, which would be a 75 basis point increase. So be aware of that. Um, then we also have that GDP growth rate coming out on Thursday, Mike. And these are going to be such big events for the market. If the GDP growth rate comes in negative, it will signal that we're actually in a recession. Now, the good news is that they're forecasting 0.6% uh, here, which is positive. So hopefully it stays positive. If it, if it does come negative, we will officially be in a recession. So keep that in mind. I'm sure that that's going to really move the markets next week, Mike. But really, the market had that big move down. Overall, though, last week was pretty nice. So hopefully we can get back above $400 with some of these events. And I didn't even talk about the earnings yet, Mike. We have a ton of big earnings coming up, too. But this decision with Powell is going to be huge. Exactly. So like you said, there's a, they're basically the market is pricing in an 80% chance of there being a 75 basis point rate hike. Now, guys, this is not a bad thing. Remember, the Fed's main goal right now is to slow down inflation and raising rates will do that. But at the same time, the Feds don't want to, you know, put the, the economy into a recession. So um, overall, definitely uh, Wednesday will be very important with Powell speaking and the interest rate decision. Uh, like Tom said, after that, on Thursday, we have the GDP data coming out, and that will come out before market open. It'll come out an hour before market open, so keep that in mind. And then uh, we also have earnings, like Tom said. So Tom, let's get right into earnings. Yeah, so these are going to be huge this week. So we have Google on Tuesday after close, Coca-Cola on Tuesday before market open. Um, the big ones, Mike, are really starting Tuesday on market close. Like I said, we have Google, Microsoft, Visa, Enphase. Then Wednesday, we have Boeing before market open, Spotify, then Shopify, kind of two, uh, two almost of the same sounding stocks right there. Then Meta, Ford, Qualcomm, Thursday, two big players in Apple and Amazon, then Friday, we have a just a big list of oil stocks, Exxon, Chevron, Phillips 66, even AbbVie and P&G will be reporting. So huge week, Mike. There, there's even a lot mixed in here that I missed, like MasterCard, Kraft Heinz, Altria. I mean, this is going to be probably the biggest earnings week uh, of this season. So definitely be aware, guys. So a lot of the biggest companies in the market are reporting like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. So definitely be on the lookout. It's going to be a big week for tech, but also a big week for growth, Mike, with some of these stocks like Shopify. And then obviously uh, we see more like Intel, you know, Roku. We have some of those bigger stocks in there too. Without a doubt. And Wednesday and Thursday are going to be like the most important because you have the bigger companies reporting, you know, like Apple, Amazon, Meta, stuff like that. And then you also have the GDP and the uh, interest rate decision coming out on those days too, or mainly Wednesday, I should say. But um, this week's going to be gigantic. Feel free to screenshot this calendar just so you could uh, have it for an easy reference later in the week. But Tom, looking at the market overall, um, it had an amazing week last week. Like you said, for the SPY, we're just under that $400 resistance level. What else are you seeing in terms of SPY levels? So looking at the SPY here, you can see over the past couple months, we've been really consolidating down here. And we actually made some nice higher lows, which has been awesome. So the main levels I'm looking at is going to be $400, obviously. That's the big resistance that I'm eyeing up. 
And the SPY on Friday started falling right back under another uh, support now, right around 394. So if we can hold 394, I think the SPY can be pretty solid here. It's just, it's going to depend on where we end up moving right here. That is a pretty big level. I'm also seeing more support down around 392.50. So be aware of that. I think both of those levels there could be pretty good in the shorter term. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that 392.50 was actually like the low of last week. You can see there are not the low of last week, the low of the last few days last week. And you can see there's been multiple bounces there. So definitely eye up like 392.50. But as far as the SPY goes, Mike, it's going to be a huge week like we talked about. It might even be a bigger week for the QQQ given all these tech stocks reporting. But we definitely need some good uh, some good breakouts here. You know, that $400 resistance might be pretty big in the shorter term. And I will say with the way SPY ripped up last week, pretty much all week long, I am worried we might end up having a couple days of consolidation heading up into, into some of these events. All righty. Good stuff. And I also know there is some increased talk about monkeypox, and it looks like the uh, World Health Organization actually declared it a uh, world uh, health emergency. Yeah, they did. And this is actually pretty bad, Mike. So monkeypox is starting to spread more and more as we start to go through, I guess, its process in the, in the beginning stages of the of the disease. And kind of going through some of these articles here, there is some pretty uh, bad numbers that we're seeing. So if we scroll down here in CNBC's article, they're saying more than 16,000 cases of monkeypox have been reported across more than 70 countries so far this year. Now, it does say that men who have sex with men are currently at the highest risk of infection. Now, obviously, we're not trying to get weird with any of this stuff. This is just the facts here. So um, just keep that in mind. This is kind of a, a strange disease. Obviously, we've had smallpox and other diseases like that in the past, and this is kind of similar to those. But keep in mind, it's just it's a crazy thing. This could end up getting bad. Obviously, the WHO thought it was uh, bad enough to declare a global health emergency because of this. And as we know, during the beginning stages of COVID, this is also kind of what they did. So I'm a little bit worried about this, Mike. It is kind of scary to see pictures of this disease and stuff. Obviously, this is like a zoomed in picture of it. Um, obviously it looks a little bit worse when it's actually on you, but I figured we'd mention it because it, it could end up affecting the market. We know COVID definitely did. Yeah. So honestly, I'm not, uh, I'm not too, too worried about this, to be honest. I feel like there is much more panic associated with like the COVID outbreak. Um, so that's just my opinion from the research I've done. I don't think we're going to see, you know, any global reactions like we saw with COVID with the world shutting down and a bunch of stuff like that. Again, that's just my personal opinion. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And that was pretty big back when COVID uh, obviously crashed the market. Like that spy went down a lot from highs of like 340 all the way down to lows of 218. So definitely big. I don't think that it'll affect the market like that either, but it's definitely something to keep on the radar just in case. Obviously, as we know, uh, these diseases can be pretty bad and it could help some of these stocks, though. Like if we see Pfizer or somebody like that starting to develop a vaccine, who knows? It might even help their stock a little bit. Yep, no doubt. All right, well, let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. With the first one, we have PENN to the upside. Yeah, Penn Gaming. This is actually really nice to see. So go ahead and make Penn Gaming break back above $34 for tomorrow. All right, with the next one, we have Roblox, but to the downside. Yeah, poor Roblox sold off pretty hard Friday. Go ahead and make them break below 38.80. All right, and then with the last one, we have Palantir, also to the downside. Palantir, yeah, there we go. Go ahead and make them break below $9.73. I wish we weren't talking about them to the downside, though. They've been doing great lately, though, so we'll see. Uh, so we are watching Palantir and Roblox for potential day trades to the downside tomorrow, only if they break below the levels Tom listed. And then we are watching PENN for a potential day trade to the upside tomorrow, only if it breaks above the level Tom listed. But I also want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, the Tangy Man. Thank you so much for your uh, giant support on YouTube. Tom and I really appreciate you. Uh, the comments you uh, write have a bunch of details. So huge shout out to you. Thanks for the support. Support. But Tom, do you have any favorite setups heading into the biggest trading week of the year? Yeah, it's going to be big, guys. So I'm not really watching any uh, any of the stocks that are going to have earnings this week. I think that those are going to be pretty risky to trade. So I'm going to be watching more of stocks like, um, for example, some of these cruise lines and airlines. Boeing does report this week. But last week, Mike, we saw 
some of these airlines and cruise lines start to really fall off the table here. I know some of those companies reported some lackluster earnings. And you can see, for example, CCL was actually down quite a bit off of highs. They had highs of like $11.10. They ended up closing the week down around $9.25. So I'm going to really keep my eyes on these for, for a potential either move down or bounce back up. A lot of volatility is coming into these. And you know, if we continue to see them move down, it's not going to be good for these reopening plays. Like I said, look at those daily charts, Mike. Like CCL is almost down to those COVID lows. It, it's honestly almost double bottoming right there. So we're on a pretty big longer term support. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really keep eyeing up these plays. I know we did pretty good on CCL with a play in the premium discord a couple weeks ago, but you know, I'm glad we sold it at the top, Mike, because they started really ripping down off those off some of those bad earnings. You know it. And also, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We have a bunch of great content planned for the future. and um, We post every day, so definitely uh, consider subscribing. Let us know your favorite setups in the comments down below, and let's have an amazing week.